Okay, so welcome to Retech, and today we're going to look at the Commodore 16. And today we're going to cover an upgrade. We've done the memory upgrade in the past, and that really does make a difference to one of these machines. But how about turning a C16 into a Commodore Plus 4 by giving it all the extra features that the Commodore 16 lacked when it was brought out because the, the memory makes a huge difference it basically allows it to run a lot more complicated software and to be a much more useful machine now the commodore plus 4 had a suite of software built in and um, to a lot of people even though the machine was kind of derided when it was brought out a lot of people found that useful and um, a lot of people use the built-in word processors, etc., for what we now call productivity. And at the time, it wasn't a normal thing to find a machine with built-in productivity software. Um, and you had to pay extra for that privilege, whether it was on cartridge or floppy disk and so on. So all of the other major machines didn't have this software built in. So it was a good selling point, but Commodore kind of fluffed the marketing. But it doesn't mean that the Commodore 16 should be left behind. So what we're going to do is have a look at the Commodore 16 and how we're going to bring it up to Commodore Plus 4 specification. So let's take a look at the Commodore 16. So here we have a Commodore 16 and we also have the little interface that we're going to use and this is a plus four ROM set and basically what it does it allows the Commodore 16 to become effectively a Commodore plus four that is providing you've already upgraded the machine to 64k and then it allows the machine to run the software that's on these ROMs, otherwise 16K really wouldn't cut it. But it's nice to be able to have the option. Now, this option was never around when this machine was built, and um, it was just seen as a very cut-down version of a Commodore Plus 4. Now, the biggest problem with the 16 was that it was viewed as a little bit of a toy. It was also viewed as a starter machine. And so it really didn't get the interest around the world that it really should have because it was no less capable than a fully fledged Commodore Plus 4. So let's take the machine apart and let's have a look. So here we go with the usual three screws. So we have one just here, just in short, we have one in the centre and one on the other side. And all you need to do is just unscrew them and be again very gentle with them because the plastics are not brilliant and you don't want to overstress the threads. Okay, so once you've done that, you can flip the machine open. Okay, you can see it's exactly the same machine as we used to do the memory upgrade. and the original ROMs are still in the machine itself, okay? So that's for future if it ever wants to be converted back to a standard Commodore 16. So we have the ROM set. And what we're going to do is we're going to install the ROM set into the sockets here. And then we have a couple of small jumpers which then make it work. So let's see how it works. So you have this new package here, which goes into this socket here. And you've got an extender, which actually plugs into the next chip up, which is a bridge for the other socket there. So push this home and then you have two small jumpers to deal with. So 
so you've got the main chip pushed in place and you've replaced the two other chips that it actually replaces so you've removed the two chips and replaced it with this single unit okay and now you've got a jumper to this chip here and this is where it's a little bit different because they don't come with any instructions they don't come with any way of actually knowing where you should put the jumpers now you've got a rough picture which is if I show you here but that's it that's all you get you don't get anything else as a reference it seems correct but it's not overly certain because there's no real instructions in and I know which pins it's possibly going to want to drive this from but I need to make sure so the only way to do that is to give it a quick test so let's give that a try okay so we're going to power the machine on and then we're going to find out what happens hopefully hopefully I've um, guessed the correct pins okay you should be able to see the standard Commodore C16 splash screen but with the addition of 64k upgrade and 3 plus 1 on key F1 so if I reach round and press F1 it comes up with the standard SYS 1525 and there we go we launch straight in to the plus 4 package And as you can see, it works a treat. So effectively, this Commodore 16 is now a Commodore Plus 4. It will run all of the software and it will run all of the packages that your standard Plus 4 can run. And it's um, not a bad conversion really because I do prefer the keyboard on the Commodore 16 to the Commodore Plus 4. I think the case and the key keyboard is a lot nicer. Okay, so now if I open the machine up again, you can see the two jumpers, which is a red and a black, okay? And you can see exactly which chip the jumper goes to. So you have this red lead, which goes to the outside pin on this upgrade the black goes to the inside or the closest to the back of the case pin on this upgrade just in case you decide to do this yourself the red pin or the lead which is closest to the front of the keyboard goes through to pin 3 on this chip here the black lead or the lead closest to the rear of the machine goes to pin 4 on the same chip here so that's the pins you need if you decide to get this conversion and again it's from the same Italian company that we got the memory upgrade from and the processor repair kit for the Commodore Plus 4s from and also the PLA in the Commodore Plus 4 so his kit is very very good and it works really really well and so far other than the the normal issues that you'd have with the Commodore Plus 4 processors or the even the Commodore 16 replacement processors from the same vendor um, everything works you know you can't have everything working 100% when you're redoing a processor kit for one of these old machines but 99% of the time you wouldn't know any different so and again it's with this kit you wouldn't know this wasn't really a plus four if you just looked at the screen so it's a very well engineered kit and it's worth while doing for your Commodore 16. Okay, so you have Commodore 16, which is essentially now a Commodore Plus 4. And as you can see on the screen, everything works the way it should do. And 
It's how this machine should have been from the factory because the Commodore 16 wasn't a bad machine overall. It was quite a decent machine. It had some capabilities that the Commodore Plus 4 couldn't do in its um, basic interpreter and it had a better, more structured basic than the Commodore 64. And also it wasn't a nasty machine. It was a machine that deserved to do better than it actually did, which is why I'm quite happy that companies and people around Europe are now supporting these machines and bringing out new products. Now, the product itself to upgrade it to a plus four is very good. The only downside is that it's not well documented. You are expected to know what you're doing with it and you're expected to know either through intuition of which pins you should be using on this um, upgrade and that could cause a few problems for people who are not quite sure which is why I thought I'd put this video together and it makes it a lot easier. Now once you do install the product it's very good and it works really well and there's no issues, no overheating issues and the machine runs very well and you wouldn't really know any difference looking at the screen between this and a Commodore Plus 4. Now it makes the 16 an eminently more usable machine, it makes it a more powerful machine. With the 64K upgrade it makes it even more powerful still. So I hope you enjoyed this, so thanks for watching and um, I hope you'll join us again on this channel soon. So thank you.